this. All right, guys, so Ashlyn is on vacation and asked me to do a little bit. Um, nearing the start of tobacco cutting season, I'm in the field now. Figured I'd get a little bit of the topping pro process. Um, probably one high, Nate. Hmm? Probably one high. Um, but what you do is you go down through the row. Uh, you can see the seed heads here. And you pretty much just go down through the row and break them off. Um, put them down in between the row. Um, so this, when you break it off, um, and drop it down, so then it leaves this where it's cut off or sheared off here. Um, the plant no longer will grow up, so it'll kind of stun its growth from growing any higher. And then um, it'll put all the rest of the growth into the leaves, um, make bigger leaves, bigger ground leaves. Um, once we top, that makes it about... Um, Usually we wait about three weeks and then we start cutting. We topped a fair amount already. So um, in about two days here, I think this might be August 1st. Um, in about two days here, we're probably going to get started cutting. So don't know when I'll get the GoPro back from Ashland, but uh, I'll try and get some cutting. But that's pretty much what goes on here. Um, earlier, I showed Nathaniel putting some lard into... Um, into my little cup here that's you can put this back around you're gonna get dizzy um that's you can your hands right now we got some rain so the leaves are pretty wet but usually on a hot day um or if it's, the leaves are dry it's, tobacco is really gummy and sticky uh so you can't really get your hand down in there so this is the grease as you can see you just kind of dip in and then you can just and then your hand just kind of slides right down into the stalk and you can break it off. Um, but I had Nathaniel fill it up and I didn't want to top any, otherwise I would ruin Ashland's camera and I didn't want to do that to him. So most of the field's done. Um, we have a couple rows up here. And uh, this is about a three acre field. We did most of it on Saturday and uh, we're gonna finish it up here this morning. So there's a sh little bit of a short row here. I'm going to do this just to give you guys an idea, and then I'm going to go back to Nathaniel and work with him. But you pretty much just take out a decent-sized top. In the smaller tobacco here, you want to take out a smaller top. Just these top couple leaves here. Um, like I said, because you broke that off, uh, it'll give this chance of leaf to grow out rather than growing up. But you just want to take out a nice top. And so on so um, I think I said it in the video where I was bailing straw but the whole tobacco crop um, is based off the leaves so you need to be as gentle and careful with this stuff as you can um, so even just walking through as you can see the rows are pretty crowded except for here there's a short row um, I'll just turn around and go back here but you got to be careful with the leaves because that is the product um, a perfect leaf is where the money in tobacco is made. Um, so it's kind of a, you got to be very careful with it. But um, like I said, I figured I would get the topping process in a little bit before we really get started. This is the last field we have to top. So I figured it was my last opportunity. So we'll check back in when we're done. Someone's getting a little aggressive. Um, got done top in the back. It breaks me up our driveway. Um, got done top in the back, like I said. Stop! <laughs> and, um, Nathaniel and I are on our way down to our one farm that we have in the back of Shed One. We're gonna pick up the re some of the rest of our tobacco wagon, uh, bring them back here.
So we got down here to the back of shed and it looks like the Amish neighbor decided to feel free to park his flatbed wagon in here. I'm not exactly sure how because he pulled it in, but as you can see, we have our tobacco wagons in here. So not sure exactly how he got it in here, but it's not his barn. So we're going to push it out and politely relocate it. And then we're going to see there's two, four, five. Yeah, five wagons here. So that's three for me and two for him. And uh, we'll get him out of here. But for those of you that don't know, this is a tobacco wagon. So it's just a running gear with a plank on it. It'll probably be easier to see outside because everything kind of blends together in here. But then it's got two rails. And so you spear the tobacco onto a tobacco lath which spans this gap and then when you pick it up you hang it on the wagon here and um, fill the wagons back them in the shed here and then it you hang the shed full so you stand on these rails way up there in the peak of the barn um, and the person on the wagon passes from the wagon to the first tier the guy in the first tier passes the guy in the second tier and so on until you get to the top where the hanger is and the hanger uh, hangs the tobacco up there. This spacing here on the wagon is kept the same. Um, the wagon is spaced the same as this and spaced the same way the whole way up through. Um, and you hang it and shed's full. Um, the shed has these ventilators, which I guess are shut from the outside, but it's pretty much the plank on the wall. I think it's every other couple. So here's a ventilator. And then that's solid and then here's another ventilator they all fold out um so once we get the shed full we'll put the ventilators out and then that will allow airflow to help dry the tobacco and then over the winter when it's time to strip it we will um take the tobacco down and strip it come on he man no you're the muscles get, get your back so now they're moving wagon lid. Yeah, so we're not exactly 100% sure what goes on, but um, now the tricky part is not every wagon here hooks up to every wagon. So we need to figure out which wagons hook to which wagons, hook them to those wagons. My bad, I'm getting distracted. Um, figure out which wagons hook to which wagons and uh, hook them and get them out of here and get them home because I don't know what's going on on this funny farm, but I'm ready to get back to our farm. So we'll see if we can get things figured out here. There's not really enough parking here, so we're just gonna loop down around, park alongside the road. Um, that's nice, looks like we got some steering to work on on that wagon. Appears to be frozen up, but should be nice for the drive home. Um, so we got two hooked behind that tractor, we'll get that tractor hooked the other three up. Um, However, I was here, found a tobacco lath. So this is a tobacco lath. It's about, I don't know, four, four feet maybe. Um, so, like I said, this just spans. Maybe this is a short one. Maybe there's a reason that this was here. Yeah, this is a short one. Never mind. Failed explanation. I was trying to show what a tobacco lath is, but yes, it is. It doesn't fit on the wagon.
One more. tend to bounce sometimes. I don't know if I got promoted or demoted, but uh, I'm out here mowing hay now. Uh, Dad was mowing and then asked me to. Um, I enjoy mowing hay. The only reason I said demoted is because uh, this tractor doesn't have, well, the air condition doesn't work right now. So uh, it's a nice toasty day here. You know, beginning of August, it always is nice and warm, so we got the uh, special air conditioning working, so we got the door tied open, um, it's not terrible, I wouldn't want to be doing it if we didn't have the door tied open, it looks stupid, but hey, it works, so that's what I'm doing, um, I'm going to mow for a while here, I think Nathaniel's going to come take over for me pretty soon. He had some other little things going on uh, that he had to do in preparation for tobacco, but uh, once he gets here, we're gonna, uh, I don't know what we'll do, but move on to something else. There's no shortage of things to do.